All right, so I wanted to just finish up a little bit about the dot product, which we didn't really get to um, finish last time in class. Uh, we already discussed the idea that we've seen the dot product. Um, keep in mind, it's also called the scalar product. And the sort of way that we really remember it is when we're talking about work. You know, if we had an object that we were moving, we exerted a force on it, and it moved along from this location to here, and this is the angle theta, we would say that the work that we did was F, S, cosine theta. One of the ways that we could think about why the expression looks like that is because when we break down the force into the two components, there's one that's parallel to the motion and there's one that's perpendicular to motion. And the force parallel to the motion is F times the cosine of theta. And so if we take that parallel times that parallel component times the distance, that's how we found the work. The perpendicular component of the force doesn't do anything for us. In a more general way, when we think about the dot product, we can think about the fact that it's an operation that we do with two vectors, and when we're calculating it, we're really finding the product of one vector times the projection of the second vector onto the first. So for instance, in this picture, I found uh, a parallel, which is the projection of vector A onto vector B, and when I find A dot B, and it's A, B, cosine of theta, again, I can think of it as that projection of A onto B times B. The idea of the projection of one vector onto another is kind of comes in handy for a variety of purposes that we're going to see as we move through the next chapters. And so I think that's a really helpful way to look at it. Um, so there's a couple other things that we want to make sure that we're aware of. Um, again, just going to the general definition of the dot product is a dot b, where we take the magnitude of a times the magnitude of b times the cosine of theta. We keep in mind that this quantity is a scalar quantity. That means it doesn't have a direction. We can only give it a direction if we multiply it by, say, a unit vector, which we'll see later on. So that's what we're good with that. Now this is the way that we calculate the dot product when we specifically have the information given us as the two vectors and then the angle that they make in between them. Sometimes we're given a vector written in unit vector form. So a might be given to us as ax times i hat plus ay times j hat plus az times k hat. And then we have vector b written also in unit vector form. Oops, B. Now, when we want to find A dot B, in this situation, it might seem, well, why can't I just find the magnitude of those two vectors and then multiply it by the cosine of the angle between them? That's how I know. That seems pretty straightforward. It is pretty easy to find the magnitude of A and B. You can just use the extended Pythagorean theorem. But it's not straightforward to find the angle between the two vectors when they're in three-dimensional space. What we can use to help us is the definition of the dot product and realize that when we take unit vectors times themselves, it's the same as taking 1 times 1 times the cosine of 0, which gives us a value of 1. But if we take the dot product of any mixture 
of unit vectors. It's taking 1 times 1 times the cosine of 90, which is 0. So if we were going to calculate the dot product by literally taking each one of these terms, just distributing it out and multiplying and doing the dot product, etc., etc., we would get a mixture of taking terms uh, like ax times bx times i dot i, or ax times by times i dot j. And what would happen is the only terms that would survive because of what we just realized right here, we would only have multiply like terms together. And so if we multiply like terms together, add up all those sum, all those products, that is how we can find the dot product for um, two vectors written in unit vector form. This is probably a review, but I wanted to make sure that you remembered how to do it. Another thing that comes in handy is if we look at a dot b and say it's a, b, cosine of theta, if we can calculate the dot product and we know the magnitude of the vectors, we can actually then use this definition to figure out what the angle is between the two vectors. We can just rearrange this. And so if we know what a dot b is, and we put that in, if we find the magnitude of the two vectors, we can then divide those two terms, take the inverse cosine, and then we can calculate the angle between the two vectors. Pretty straightforward. Again, that's something we did before. We wanted to make sure you remembered. So, what becomes important for our uses is can we use this application for something that's going to come in handy for us um, in our future problems? And the answer is yes. Um, in this particular problem, we have a force, and we also have a line given by AA, goes from the origin to this other point. And we would want to know what is the projection of that force F along that blue line. Um, the first thing that we want to do is we want to find the components of that force. The force is in the YZ plane, so it doesn't have an X component. The Y component is going to give by 500. Um, times the co well, the 4 over 5, and it's in the negative y direction, so I'm putting that negative sign in there, so it's minus 400, and the z component is positive, it's 500 times 3 fifths, so that's 300. So the way that I could write this force in unit vector form will be minus 400i um, plus, sorry, not i, j, 300k. All right, so that's how I, I have that force. Now, I want to write the vector that goes from point A to point A. I know that's kind of confusing, but that's how they named it. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose this point right here and define what that point is. It has an x value of minus 1, has a y value of 2, and a z value of 2. So if I wanted to find the vector, or the line that goes from here to here, I'm going to have, it's going to be minus 1i plus 2j plus 2k. Now, if I only want to know the projection of 
the force onto the line, I don't want, I really want to have a unit vector for AA. So the magnitude of AA is the square root of 1 plus 4 plus 4, so it's square root of 9, so it's 3. So the unit vector for that line that's along the line is minus 1 third i plus 2 thirds j plus 2 thirds k. And the projection of the force along the line, AA, can be given by the force dotted with that unit vector. So let's take a look at that. So our force was minus 400J plus 300K, and AA unit vector was um, minus a third I plus two thirds J plus two thirds K. And so the projection F onto that line AA is F dotted that unit vector, which is going to be 0 times minus 1 third plus 2 thirds times minus 400 plus 2 thirds times 300. So notice because when I'm doing that dot product, I'm not getting any direction. And so I'm going to get minus 800 thirds plus 600 thirds. So that's minus 200 thirds. And so that's how big it is. If I want to write that projection as a vector, and so we'll call it f parallel, the way that we would do it is we would have taken this dot product, but then we would also multiply it again by the unit vector of AA. So that's what gives it a direction, because it is parallel to it, so it has the same directions. It's and so F parallel would be given by minus 200 thirds times the minus 1 third I plus 2 thirds J plus 2 thirds K. And I'm not going to distribute it for time's sake. But then I thought there was another interesting thing that we can do is the question that I have on this page. Can you find the perpendicular component? Because what we have found is the component of the force that's parallel to the line. What about the component of the force that's perpendicular to the line? It turns out that the total force can be written in terms of those two components. So once we know the parallel component, we can just subtract that from the total force to find the perpendicular component. Another little thing that's going to come in handy. So that's what I wanted to cover. I hope that you find that helpful. In any case, I think some of these things are tools that you're going to use later in some later chapters, like the next chapter we do.